Hi, Gerard here. Welcome to Learn Delphi. In the last lesson, we learned how to use characters in sets to help us to simplify compound Boolean expressions for if statements. If you missed out on the previous video, I recommend that you first watch that video. In this lesson, we continue with if statements. We will look at sets again, but this time it will be sets with numbers. We already started the project last time that we will finish in this lesson. Let me start with a demonstration of the solution we will finish in this lesson. For the new guys, we focus on specific code concepts in every lesson, so I do not want to waste time demonstrating the development of the user interface of the application we create. I have many videos earlier in the series that you can watch that covers visual components, naming of components and so on. So if you want to create the user interface for this lesson, you can watch this video and observe how I created it. But if you want to dive into the code immediately, you can go to the description box below this video. There you will find the link that takes you to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash learndelphi. On Patreon you can download the start and the solution project files. You will also see a link that will take you to a page where you can download the free version of Delphi 10.3 Community Edition. Go download the files in the software and come back to write the code with me. We already started this simple project that describes a character that you type into this edit. Last time we wrote code that enables and disables the button when you enter or remove a character from the edit. We also wrote the code that described the letters in the alphabet. Our code handles uppercase and lowercase letters. If you type a letter that's not a vowel, like B, the panel displays consonant. And in the previous lesson we showed not in the alphabet if you type a number or a special character. We will make some changes in our code. If you type a number, an if statement must check if it's an odd or an even number. For example, 9 in the edit must display odd number in the panel, and 2 must display even number. Also notice how the button is disabled when the edit is blank, and enabled when you do enter a character in the edit. If you type a special character like an exclamation, the panel must display not an alphanumeric character. Let's dive in. If you download it to start the files, open it in your IDE and let's start. This is the project in my Delphi IDE. Double click the edit. Here we already have the code that checks if the edit is blank or not. And based on that, the enabled property of the button is set. I'm just going to give an overview of the code we added in the last lesson. I'm not going to explain it line by line. If you need a detailed explanation, go back to the previous lesson and watch that video. If you scroll up, you will see the code that executes when you click the button. We have a char variable for the character in the edit named chr character that stores a description of the character. The description is assigned by the if branches here and the result is assigned to the caption of the panel here at the bottom. Here we have an if statement that uses a set to check if the character is in the alphabet. If not, the compiler will skip all this code and branch out to the else statement, which will assign the phrase not in the alphabet to str description. If the character is in the alphabet, this if branch will execute. Inside the if block we nested another if statement with its own else block. So if the outer if statement evaluates to true, the inner if statement will check if the character is a vowel or not. The inner if statement also uses a set to do the evaluation. If it is a vowel, the word vowel is assigned to str description. If it is not a vowel, the inner else branch will execute, and the word consonant will be assigned to the string variable named str description. The statement here at the bottom executes regardless of the results of the if statement. Whatever the condition, there will be a value in str description that describes the character in the edit. This statement assigns the value to the caption of the panel. Now we must handle numbers. Go above the begin statement for the event handler. We want to declare a variable that must store the number we get from the edit. Type btenum as byte. In the last lesson, I showed you that the max length property of the edit is set to 1. That means you can only type one character in the edit. If that character is a number, 9 will be the biggest number you will be able to type. So a byte variable is suitable for that. At the moment, numbers are handled by this else block. But all the other non-alphabetical characters are also handled here. We want the numbers to be handled separately. To do that, we will squeeze an else if between the first if and the last else of the outer if statement. Put your cursor after this end statement. Press enter. On the new line type else space if space. Over type true with this statement. 
You must type it exactly as I have it here. Let's see what this means. Sets help us to simplify Boolean expressions, especially in if statements where we need to evaluate many expressions with OR operators. In this example, we must decide if the Boolean variable named BLN is prime must be true or false. Number 2 is the smallest prime number, so this if statement checks if int num equals 2. If so, the Boolean is true. That is quite straightforward, but let's assume you must check for all the prime numbers under 10. The next expression must check if int num is 3. We can just add another expression to this if statement using an OR operator. Now the if statement reads if int num equals 2 or int num equals 3. If any of those are true, then bln is prime is also true. Quite straightforward. The next prime number we must check is 5. So we add the third expression. Then 1 for 7. That already looks a bit messy. But let's say we must also check for prime numbers up to 20. Now we must also add checks for 11. 13, 17, and 19. With so many compound Boolean expressions, it becomes very messy. Now imagine you have to do it for all the prime numbers under 100. You will then have 25 expressions separated by OR operators. The IN operator can simplify this for us. Here we also check for a prime number under 20 with IN. Notice how simple and clean this code is. If you want to check for a range or a set of numbers in an ordinal range, you can do it like this. Here we check if the value in int h falls within the range 90 to 99. For a range, we use two dots between the lower and the upper values. This expression will also evaluate the lower and upper bounds of the range. In other words, 90 and 99 will also be included in the check. If int h is in that range, we assign the word nonagenarian as the h category to a string variable named str category. So in unit 14.5, where we explored the relational operators, we assigned H categories to 11 different H ranges. This is how the code looked. You can now go back to that project and replace it with IN operators for every decade range. This is how it will look if you do that. If you have two sets of numbers to evaluate, you can add the second range between the block brackets like this. You must separate the two ranges with a comma. This if statement will assign TRUE to a boolean named BLN discount if int h is for children from 0 to 12 and for seniors 60 to 100 years. If you do this without the set, you will have many operators like greater or equal, less or equal and the OR operator. Let's look at our project again. Here we use the IN operator to check if the value in the character is any number from 0 to 9. So with this statement, we use a set to check if CHR character is 0 to 9. Notice the 0 and 9 is still enclosed in quotes because they come from an edit so they are still characters. Also notice the two dots and all that is surrounded by square brackets. Go to the next line, type begin and press enter. Between begin and end type this statement. Here we read the text in the edit. Then we convert it to an integer. The result is then assigned to the byte variable named PTE num. Now listen carefully. If we did this assignment earlier, for example here after the begin statement that starts the event handler, we may get an error, because the text in the edit may be a non-numeric character. If you attempt to convert that to an integer, the compiler will not be happy with that. So here we first check that it is indeed a numeric character, before we assign it to the byte variable. So we do the assignment just in time, and not too early. Go to the next line and type IF followed by a space over type TRUE with BTE NUM mod 2 equals 0. Before we continue, two things here. Firstly, this IF statement is now nested in this ELSE IF branch. So the outer IF must be TRUE. In other words, CHR character must be a numeric character from 0 to 9 before the inner IF statement will be evaluated. Secondly, the MOT operator is dividing the number in BTE num by 2. If the number is for example 5, and we do the division the normal way like this, we will get 2.5, in other words a fraction. But if we divide 5 with the MOT operator, only the remainder will be returned. Dividing 5 apples by 2, without cutting one apple in half, will leave one whole apple remaining. So this mathematical expression divides int num by 2, and if the remainder is 0, then it means that the number must be an even number. We will still do mathematical expressions, functions and operators when we finish decision statements. Then we will use MOT again. Go to the next line, type begin and press enter. 
between begin and end type str description colon equals even number. If the number can be divided by 2 without leaving a remainder, we assign the words even number to str description. That will then be used to display the description in the panel. Remove the semicolon after the end on the new line type else on the next line type begin and press enter. Between begin and end type str description colon equals odd number. If int num has a remainder when you divide it by 2, the number is odd. So here we assign odd number to str description. Now that we handle the numbers in a separate if branch, we can change this description. This branch will now only handle non alphanumeric characters. So we can change it to not an alphanumeric character. Let's test it. Run the program. Type 2 in the edit and click the button. The panel displays even number. Type 3 and click the button. Now you can also test other characters to make sure you still get the correct results. When you are done, you can close the form and save your project. Next time, we will look at the different type of conditional statement we can use to make decisions in code. We will explore case statements. If you learned something today, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. Happy coding and remember my favorite Nutty Professor's words. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. I'll see you next time.